Yo, what's up guys? Uh, this is Technical Tim here, and I'm going to get a little head start on next weekend's card. It's currently it's currently April 11th, and um, I'm looking to get a little bit of an early start on the Russia card next week, and that's a card in St. Petersburg, Russia, and sorry. That's going to be on April 20th, so we're about nine days out. And I started taping already. And I found one fight on the card as I was going through taping that um, I haven't decided if I'm going to play Jotko or not. I, I, I haven't, but I, I may. Um, if I do, it won't be a huge play, but I might play him. But definitely stay away from... D don't play Alan Amadovsky. Um, and I'm going to give you the reasons as to why. And I'm actually going to walk you through... Um, one of his full fights that I found online. I'll, I'll walk you through it and kind of point out the, the technique that I saw. But the reason I picked this fight to talk about is I, I found some techniques that I don't think a lot of people can easily see on tape. That's going to be absolutely crucial for this matchup if it goes down to the floor. So just to give you background, you guys all know um, Joe Co. I mean, he, he's kind of, he's like a decent striker, seasoned striker, but his grappling's actually pretty good. And Judging by the way Allen fought in his one fight that's played out so far, I I could see there being some grappling here, whether or not Joko engages with him or if Allen engages with Joko. And Joko's actually a pretty good grappler, and I'm going to walk you... Whenever I, I go through tape later in this video, I'm going to be walking through his fight with Tylus Latis, and there's a reason why. And now I'm going to talk about Alan Amadovsky. He's a newcomer, um, and looking at, I, I, I watched all his fights, and let me find the name of the guy that I'm going to be walking you guys through his, the main fight on that one. Um, but he's currently 7-0, and he has a lot of just really quick finishes with punches on the feet, and he's fought pretty much no good guys, uh, judging by what I what I watched and what I saw on tape. His one win that played out and that actually went to the second round um, was against Massalimiano San Marco. I probably butchered that name, but that's the fight I'm going to be walking through because it looks like Allen will grapple a little bit in fights, and I, I want to walk you through this fight, and there's a lot of grappling sequences in it, and ju judging by this guy, judging this guy's very, this Allen guy, he, he's very green. It looks like kind of, or not not too green, but he's pretty green, and he hasn't fought much competition. Um, I'm just guessing that he'll be ag aggressive maybe at points, and this could really easily end up on the floor because in this fight that this is the only fight that played out, and he was going for a lot of takedowns. So I figure there could be some grappling exchanges here, and. The key thing that I saw, and I'm going to be walking it through on tape, and it'll make a lot more sense whenever I actually walk you guys through it, is Joko versus Tylus Latus. Um, actually, let, let me talk the other one first. Allen against this mess, I'm going to call him Samarco. I'll call him that. When Allen was fighting Samarco, there's a lot of grappling exchanges where Allen would kind of force the grappling, and... He, first of all, he would kind of lose position really easily whenever he was on top. And there's, I'm going to show you something on Joko's tape versus Latus, why I think Joko will be able to get up if he gets taken down quite easily. And then any time that Allen ended up on his back, he used the same... It, he, first of all, he looked green off his back, and he was getting tired by the grappling exchanges. This fight was a long time ago. It was a few years ago. Um like four years ago, but at the same time, he's only had like three total minutes of cage time since. So it's really the, the most recent footage we got and grappling tends to stay a lot. You'll see improvements in fighters a lot, fight to fight, but grappling, especially this type of stuff that I'm going to be pointing out can stay pretty similar throughout years. And I'm guessing that it's, I'm guessing he hasn't cleaned up this part of his game because he really hasn't had any, any fights like, that didn't end more than, you know, they all ended in like 30 seconds. So since so I don't think he's going to learn much, but a, 
a thing he kept doing whenever he got put on his back is he would dig an underhook. He would dig an underhook to come up and he didn't look very good off his too good off his back and the way he dig dig the underhook it doesn't look like an extremely sharp get up game. A lot of people can dig underhooks from bottom and they're a lot quicker at, at it. They and they use post hands and, and they kind of just know what they're doing more. His are a lot more labored. And Joko, I found it in the latest fight, is amazing at defending that underhook get up. And he does three different things. And I'm gonna be walking you through Joko's tape. Um, as to how he counters that position, because it kept working for Allen against this Marcel Mala or Sam Samarco guy. Sorry, I can't get that guy's name right. Against Samarco, his underhook kept working, but I, I don't think it's going to work off Joko, and I'm going to show you why. And I, I'm pretty sure Latus is probably a much better grappler than than Allen. So first, I'm going to walk you through the. Allen fight versus Samarco, and it's really the only, I'll watch the whole fight with you guys, and it's really the, it's not, it's not that long, it's like a round and a half, it's really the only fight that's played out for him, and then I'm going to show you the Joko fight, like, clips of the fight against Latis, where he shows get, good get-ups and really good counters on the underhooks whenever people are trying to get up, and to why I think he'll be the top player in this matchup if it ends up going on the floor, he's a better grappler, and I'm going to show you why, so... Here we go. Let's watch the the Allen and Samarco fight first. Here we go here's Amadovsky, and this is versus Samarco, and you can see, um, yeah, Massimilino, whatever Samarco. I kept mispronouncing his name earlier, but this is really the only fight that played out, and I think it shows a lot about Amadovsky's game compared to his other fights, where his other fights just ended very quickly. So, look, this is really grappling heavy fight. So they come out, um, just so you know, Amadovsky is in the blue gloves. So he's this guy here. So right away, he kind of goes for a body lock. Um, he's using good head position up against the cage. He switches from the body lock, grabs a right ankle right there, and um, he reverses position, takes him down. Okay, wrestling. It didn't look that tight or or slick, but it's okay. Um but I don't think it's any better than anything Joko's seen. So, okay. Very key thing here. A reason why I do not think Amadowski will be able to hold Joko down and why I think Joko, if this becomes a grappling match, will be the top player. And like I've said in other videos, in a, in a fight that may be heavy grappling, you always favor the top player. Watch. All right, what do you see? This is what I see. The bottom man. Look how much space Amadovsky is given the bottom man to where he could easily get a left underhook to get to his feet. There, there's so much space. You could... Uh, Samarco so could easily get a left underhook and get back to his feet. And look, he kind of starts doing it right here. He, he could get up right here. I mean, he, he's free. There's so much room. It's just he's not that... He can't really take advantage of this space because he's not that high level. But a guy like Joko, and I'll show you, Joko uses good um, use of openings like this against Latus. I'll show you that later. He went for, like, some submission instead. But just see, like, how easily he kind of just is working back to his feet. There's a lot of space. Um, Amadowski just kind of used an amateur type of, like, throw to get him back down. And this kind of just speaks to the to the volume of, uh, it kind of just speaks to the, uh, the abilities of Samarco and not really Amadowski. Because that little throw he just did wouldn't work on a lot of UFC talent. Okay. Even there, see how, um... Amadovsky, even whenever he... So, one, he gives you openings to get underhooks. And two, even when... He, this back retention, he almost lost balance on that very easily. And it wasn't even a good bridge from Samarco. And he has to... I think he's using his left hand to keep his balance, like a post hand here. Because he can't even keep ba really good balance. So, I'm not saying... I'm, I'm not saying he's like a terrible fighter or anything. I'm just saying I don't think some of this skill set... And his tightness and his jujitsu and his back mount will be able to keep a guy like Joko down, who, who's shown to be UFC caliber. And like I said, he gives he gives underhook 
openings for bottom players. And right now he's getting too high. I don't I don't remember everything that happens in this fight, but he's getting too high. You could grab his head and get out of here. I don't know if this guy does that. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah, he starts grabbing his head. He was way too high. So there's a lot of reversal opportunities if you see for anyone fighting this guy, especially Joko who I mean, Joko outgrappled Tylus Latus and I'll be showing you that cl that clip like I had mentioned. But just see like not much stability from the top. He gets too high, he doesn't have much control, and he gives openings for underhooks. So if this fight goes to the floor, I see Joko being able to easily get um, out from bottom position. So that's the first point that I wanted to make. And then I want to make a point later, kind of in this video, and later when we watch Joko, of how Joko is going to be able to keep him down because his counters to underhooks are really good. But I'm going to show you how... Amadowski keeps using usually he'll use an armbar sweep I think which this it, that that's not going to work at high level MMA watch I think he gets a sweep here from an armbar and an armbar like this there's a lot of like openings here and the armbar is not very tight to where Joko j could just pull out of this and probably pass to side control and Joko does things like that too latest but just See, even his left leg should have been over his uh, head there to sink in the armbar. So there's just a lot of greenness of the grappling. I'm not, and this fight was a long time ago, but still. And, and look, he just kind of fell back in to his back. There's just not much stability or control. See, and this guy ended up passing the side control. Okay, so watch. See how he kind of used a left. A left underhook here that was in side control so it's a little different notice notice that because he he uses the left underhooks a lot and the underhooks to get back from bottom position to top a lot and i'm going to show you later why joke is going to be able to stop that I, i've made most of my key points on the grappling already but we can kind of just write out the rest of this fight and i, I might fast forward through a few parts just so you can kind of I, I can kind of point out some more things, but see, he just ended up on his back again. And I just see a lot of passing opportunities too. But I do want to show you whenever he, I don't, I don't remember when he uses an underhook to get back and reverse position, but I want to show you that because I want to show you later how Joko can stop that. He's trying to create space so he has the right idea with his legs to kind of push off. So that wasn't bad. But still, his grappling just does not look very controlled going against a pretty uh, lower level fighter. Look again, he kind of uses an arm bar to get back to top position again. And I don't think that's going to happen. He just threw him down. Like a, a lot of these reversals are maneuvers that aren't going to work against... They're not going to work in the UFC. Let's just put it that way. So that's the first round. Let's get to round number two. Okay, I think we're in round number two now. Look, he likes to always go for that arm bar, and it's very loose. Like, there's so many opportunities for Joko. Look, and this guy gets side control here. Joko's going to be able to do that very easily. And, and jo Joko's a pretty silly grappler. See? Okay, there we go. That's it. He uses the underhook again here, okay? And most of these underhooks, I actually didn't notice this the first time on tape, are coming from side control and not guard. But that looks to be his kind of go-to maneuver besides that arm bar sweep, which just isn't going to work. But he also likes to use that underhook to kind of get back and get his top position. So that's really the main point that I, I want you to see going into the analysis and the, the clip that I'm going to be showing you of Joe Covers latest. I'm going to kind of fa fast forward through a lot of this now. I think he just kind of ends up on top of him and just kind of punches him out and wins the fight. 
I'm pretty sure that's what happens. Okay, so this guy actually just got... So he was punching him a little bit. He just kind of, I mean, he's just kind of getting the top position here. See, and then he just like rolled off. So it's just kind of like not that great of stuff. And look, he's going for that left underhook again. It's inside control. So he bridged off, got the left underhook. And some Marco just made a huge mistake. That left underhook that he has, and he's trying to take his back. And Joko, or th this wouldn't, Joko would not be doing what Samarco's doing. Samarco's circling this way with his legs to his head. That's the worst thing you could do. You need your feet to be going back this way to get top position. Instead, his feet, his legs are going this way, and that's just giving him more opportunity, uh, Amadovsky, to take Samarco's back. I'm guessing he's going to get up here. Look, he's circling to, towards the head. That's just a no-no. He's still circling to the head. Look, he's just going to give up his back. So, yeah. I think you get my point, though, uh, on this fight. So, he kind of gets him back up. And then I think he just pounds him out from here. So... That's a fight. And now I'm going to show you Joko. And the main thing I want to point out is that Joko counters underhooks really, really well. And I do not think Amadovsky will be able to get up so easily going against Joko. All right, guys. So here, now let's look at the Joko clip that I had promised you. So here's the... It's only about a minute long. Um, there's two sequences here that I want you to see. The first sequence demonstrates how Joko does a good job at getting un an underhook and finding a small space to be able to get back to his feet. And remember, Amadovsky, one of the main lessons I talked about in his, in his fight is that he gives you a lot of room on top to get an underhook. And it doesn't look like he knows the counters to underhooks whenever you're on top position, which Jotko does know. And I'm, the second sequence is gonna be demonstrating that. So here, this just shows how Jotko, I'll kind of scroll through quickly. How Jotko, see his right arm, or his left arm, sorry. See his left arm. See, there's just a, a there's not even that much space. Like Le Latus is heavy on top and Latus is a good top player. And he, uh, he's staying chest to chest well. He's not even giving him that much space. And look how easily Joko gets that left, see that, that left arm, that left uh, underhook to just fish the underhook and start reversing position. Look at that. Not even much space. Boom. He does it really easily. And then the other point that I wanted to talk about, and so... Yeah, if, if Joko does something like that and there's that much space, I'm pretty sure he's going to get an underhook and be able to get on top. Latus is tricky, though, and he uses this as a bait to go for an armbar. And remember, um, Amadovsky likes to use armbars to sweep, and I had talked about how Joko would be able to easily pull out. Watch what Joko does whenever he goes for the armbar. Look how quick he is to pull out and, and, and kind of scramble out. So I think he'll be able to pass to side control pretty easily and so now I want to talk about um, something else I'm gonna move this let's move this down so now as I, so I, I first kind of just gone over how Joko's is gonna find the space to get the underhooks and he'll be able to get out of position or, or, or get out, out out of submissions and arm bars by being able to pass the side control because he quickly pulls out now, whenever he's on top, I don't think Amadovsky's underhook that he likes to do is going to be able to work that well because Latus fights for underhooks in this sequence. And go watch this fight. Like, you're going to see sequences like this happening throughout the fight. But there's generally three ways to, to counter top position underhooks. Um, so whenever you're the top guy to counter someone, and, and you're going to see Latus is going to use his right arm to go for the underhook. And you're going to see Joko do all three of these things. And there's other ways to defend, um, to use 
counters to the underhook, but these are like three really basic ways to do it, and Joko throws, shows a good understanding of doing all of them. But first, you can re-pummel an underhook. Now watch. So Joko's staying heavy on top. He's in half guard. Okay, right there. So Latus starts going for his right underhook, and look at that. You could barely even see it. It happened so fast. Joko just, he re-pummeled an underhook. He used his left to get his own underhook. And whenever you get your own underhook, you can then force the bottom man um, back on his back. Which he kind of started doing. Okay. And then he swim moved back out. Okay. Just because he was like, okay, you're going for the underhook again. So he just swim moved his arm back out. And then he just pushes him back down. And now you're going to see the second way. So you just kind of saw a re-pummel of an underhook. And he also used like a swim move to get away from the underhook and then just push him down. So uh, Latus didn't have an underhook anymore. Now you're going to see push on the head with the free hand. Or you can do the free elbow, whatever you want to do. Look at that. So Latus is going for that right underhook again. And Joko's using his free hand, like I had talked about, to push on um Latus's head to keep him to keep his base down so you've, you've seen him do two really really subtle and very very grappling savvy things to keep Latus down when Latus is fishing for those underhooks to get back up and then here's the third thing you can do you can use posts to keep a strong base so if someone's uh fishing for an underhook Sometimes you want to become the high man. I talked about the importance of being the high man in the Ben Askren um, study against Jake Herbert. And you, you can use a post by using a hand. You can use your, your leg. You can use a post leg. You can use a post hand. But watch how Joko... And Latus goes for an underhook here, but he also goes for like a half guard sweep. So he tries going that way too. Um but the concept's still there. Like, if you use posts, you can keep a strong base to maintain top position. And you'll kind of see, I'm, I'm going to quickly go through this, but you can see how Joko will start doing that. Okay, so he's already using a post hand to stay heavy on top. And this just creates more, um, more force to keep uh, Latus down. And then I think right there, I think this is what Latus was trying to do. I think he was trying to sweep him that way with a half guard sweep. And look, Joko's using, to, to kind of fight it, he's using a strong post leg over there. And he's keeping a really strong base to fight these underhooks and these sweeps. He's using the post right there. Look, and then he uses another post hand whenever he uh, whenever Latus tries to sweep him over. So in this situation he was just using post hands i think he's posting over there too he might not be i can't fully tell but he's just using a lot of posts and he's using all the limbs he has to keep a strong base in this position he's posting there as well so yeah that, that was the whole sequence and i just wanted to show you guys that so um remember these are the three ways that you can defend underhooks when you're on top position to keep position and joko just demonstrated all those in one sequence and i just think um he's going to be able to fight the underhook of amadovsky and i think he's going to be able to get up himself for the reason i i, I stated because joko fishes for underhooks well himself and amadovsky just gives too much space and i don't think he's going to be able to keep joko down and I know I've been grappling focused on this, but it's because Amadowski, we haven't really seen much of his striking other than just one hitter quittering people, really. So we don't know how good it is. And Joko's definitely got some serviceable striking. So just, but just going on the grappling alone and these concepts that I'm pointing out show that Joko should be the top man if this becomes a grappling match, which means you shouldn't be betting on Amadowski in this fight um he's currently at like plus 130 and that's just not worth it i haven't decided if i'm gonna play joko i might have to do a little more research but just from what i've seen here you you shouldn't bet amadovsky so 
Thanks for listening, and I really, really appreciate all the support. I would appreciate a thumbs up on the video, and um, if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate that too. Thanks, guys.